Hi everyone, thank you for tuning into our Facebook Live on the flu vaccine. My name is Adair and today I have with me Dr. David Kleber, an internal medicine physician at Oshner Health Center Elmwood. The flu can have a serious effect on the health of our communities, and with flu cases increasing, it's more important than ever that we're taking the proper precautions to protect ourselves. On today's Facebook Live, we'll be discussing what our hospitals are seeing with cases this year, how to best protect yourself, and what flu treatment options are available. If you have any questions along the way, be sure to leave them on the com in the comments section and we'll try to answer them. So first off, thank you, Dr. Cleaver, for being with us today. Hi, I was wondering going? if you could um, start off with introducing yourself, explaining what you do at Oshner, maybe what specialties you focus on. Sure. Yeah. So I, uh, David Kleber, I, I, I grew up in the New Orleans area. I completed my medical school training and my residency at LSU here in New Orleans. Um, I'm, I'm a primary care physician. I've been practicing in the New Orleans area since 2014, and I've been with Oshner since 2019. Um, as a primary care doctor, we treat all the first line diseases that adult medicine will, will bring us. And uh, we work closely with our specialists um, as needed to take care of our patients. I'm currently working in the Elmwood location um, with Auctioneer Health System in Cl on Clearview in Metairie. And uh, we're, we're set up over there for now. Well, we're excited to have you on today. Um, to start off, I think one of the biggest questions we commonly see is about the 2020 flu season. Obviously, COVID, you know, was on people's top of mind. So that was a big topic last year and this year. Um, but we also noticed that the flu season last year was historically low. Can you explain the decline in numbers that occurred last year? Well, I think with everything, it was probably multifactorial. We saw a lot, a very high rate of flu vaccinations last year. I think everybody mm -hmm. was in this very health conscious mode and we, we saw a record number of, of flu vaccines, which probably contributed to the low numbers of influenza throughout our community. Also, the, the mitigating measures, the, the, the things that we were doing to prevent COVID probably had a good effect in preventing flu as well. Those things would be hand hygiene, mask use, social distancing, Maybe not things we do, we have done historically, but definitely would have had an effect on reducing the amount of influenza in our community. And probably uh, thirdly, I would, I would expect with everyone laser focused on COVID-19, um, the testing was more geared towards COVID-19, but flu is still very much a problem for us in this country and worldwide. So, um, you know, we're looking this year to make sure we include influenza back on the top of our radar since it is a perennial infectious disease that tends to cause a lot of sickness amongst uh, people, healthy people even. And speaking of this year, um, can you give us any insight on kind of what we're seeing this year with this flu season? Is it um, more intense than last year? Are we seeing more cases? Any insight on that would be great. Well, it does look to be picking up. Um, if you look at the data brought in by the CDC, they track week to week what the flu cases are in the country. And about three or four weeks ago, we started to see a gradual uptick. And in, in, in the past week, we've seen a dramatic increase in flu cases. Uh, flu season is usually between somewhere between July to, to May of the following year, with the peak being around January and February. Uh, so we're certainly seeing more cases coming up um, in the past two weeks to, to expect a pretty aggressive flu season this year. Um, the flu variant this year that seems to be the most prominent in our area here in Louisiana is influenza A. Um, and it, it's, it's one of the ones that we target for in the flu vaccines, but it does seem to be the predominant version of influenza this year in our community. Okay, and with you know these cases that you know we see picking up, um, what are the primary ways that people can help prevent get the flu? A lot of the same ways that we fight COVID nineteen. Um, so mm -hmm. vaccination is key. Vaccination can limit the amount, uh, limit the chance that you might you might contract the influenza infection even after being exposed. And then even being exposed and having an infection, you may not be as contagious as you would have without the vaccine. Um, and other hand hygiene, mask use, 
avoiding touching your hands and face um, when you're in public settings, those kinds of things that we do for COVID will also help us reduce the amount of influenza in our community. Um, but I would think that, you know, vaccines and, and hand hygiene would be the two big things to, um, you know, prevent getting flu for yourself, but also help with the community in general, making sure that we keep this under control. Great. And I know, Ashner, we have been giving out the flu vaccine um, since late September, early October. Um, so if patients haven't gotten their flu vaccine yet, um, where are places at Ashner that patients can go to to get that vaccine? There are a lot of places. So your primary care or pediatric office, you know, your regular PCP, they administer flu vaccines of, of all the different kinds in the office. Um, you can go to any auctioner pharmacy and wellness location, um, of which there are a number scattered around the city. Um, usually you just walk in, uh, walk in for the vaccine, just tell them you need it. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes they do accept um, appointments. And then they do, you know, most major insurances um, across the board cover vaccination. So that's usually not a problem. And then alternatively, you can go to any urgent care location and they can administer influenza vaccines. Um, keep in mind that, you know, we try to direct patients accordingly based on where, where we have the most availability. And I would say right now, I'd probably prioritize your primary care doctor and the auction of pharmacy locations to get a general vaccination. Okay, great. And if there are any patients that you know are interested, if you haven't scheduled an appointment yet and you're interested of going to your primary care doctor, you can schedule those appointments through your My Oshner account. You can go to myoshner.org to schedule that, or you can also call 1-866-OSHNER and get that um, appointment scheduled. Um, you know, we've also heard talk of just how effective the flu vaccine is. Obviously, there are different strands each year. Um, do we have any preliminary data on how effective uh, the flu vaccine is that we have this year? So the CDC reporting has been pretty tough this year because we had a historically low flu season last year. They use a lot of last year's um, data to, to support the following year. And, and so far, that's not available. And our you know, it's just since we're seeing the numbers pick up in the more recent weeks, it'll be some time before we can get some kind of idea as to how effective this influenza uh, vaccination is this year. Historically, it does pretty well. Um, just this year, all flu vaccines are what's called quadrivalent, uh, whereas before we were targeting one or two or three versions of or expected versions of, of influenza. Now we're using a quadrivalent vaccine, which targets four different ones, two influenza A and two influenza B that are thought to be the predominant strand in the country. And so it remains to be seen, but with this quadrivalent um, technology, we should be able to see a little more effectiveness this year, uh, maybe than in previous years. Okay, great. Um, and I know a common question we also get, um, and this is vaccines in general, you know, you can't expect to get a vaccine and not always have zero side effects. Um, so if you could just explain some of the common side effects that people can get from the flu vaccine, just so that they're aware to be on um, the lookout for. Sure. So any vaccine is designed to stimulate your immune system. That's the purpose of giving it. We give you this antigen, we give you this molecule in your body, and we expect the body to recognize it and generate an immune response to it. When that happens, you can get some side effects um, from the vaccine, although they're very mild and, and limited to, you know, just a few days on, on in the most part, they can include soreness and redness at the injection site. You can get headaches. You can even get mild fever and nausea and body aches. And it, it may sound like, you know, the side effects are equivalent to what you're trying to prevent, but these are very mild and don't get worse to the point where you can have complication from them as opposed to actually getting the infection when you know you may get over it in a few days but there's a good there's a there's at least a decent chance that it may progress to the point that you may need to access the healthcare system go to the hospital go to an emergency room we usually don't we, we rarely see that with side effects from the vaccines 
And that's a, a really good point, because I think something else that, you know, we still see lingering on especially social media from time to time is this myth that um, the flu vaccine itself can cause the flu. Um, so can you explain why that isn't true and why these symptoms that you might experience aren't necessarily you getting the flu? Well, most infections um, affect the body in two ways, the virus or the bacteria directly attacking cells in your body, and then your body's own immune response to that virus, to that bacteria. So when someone is exposed with influenza, the virus starts to replicate in your body, attacking cells in the respiratory tract, and then the body recognizes those, that virus and sends immune cells to go fight the virus. Well, as those immune cells circulate through your body, they cause their own symptoms. And so when you get a flu shot or any vaccine, it's not uncommon for the vaccine to stimulate an immune response similar to having the flu. Now it's not infectious and it doesn't progress to be life-threatening in the vast majority of cases, um, but it can seem like you have some flu-like symptoms after a vaccine. And this is true with a lot of vaccines. We're seeing that a lot with the COVID-19 vaccine, but it's, you know, when you ask most healthcare professionals, it's much better to have those milder side effects to a vaccine than the actual full-blown infection. Very true. Um, and we also see from time to time, you know, people may be hesitant to get the vaccine because they say they have allergies, for example, an egg allergy. Um, can you explain how those people can still get the flu vaccine? Sure. So the egg allergy, um, patients with egg allergies, um, understandably have some concerns about the influenza vaccine. Um, since the 1930s, we've been using um, chicken eggs to harvest the materials needed to create these vaccines. And if you've had a serious reaction to egg allergies, um, you may have a reaction to the influenza vaccine. Now, we quantify severe reactions to eggs as anaphylaxis, which includes trouble breathing, generalized type of uh, systems, uh, low blood pressure, respiratory distress, angioedema, which is the swelling of the face and the lips. Um, but you can have other allergies to eggs like, you know, a, a slight rash, some itchiness and such. Um, but it's safe still, as long as you haven't had anaphylactic type reactions to eggs, if you've just had milder reactions, it's still safe to get the flu vaccine. We usually recommend that it's delivered in a, in a location that can monitor you for a period of time, like as if, it, you know, as in your primary care doctor's office, um, it would be a good location for you. But if you have any questions about whether or not you are eligible for a vaccine despite having an egg allergy, I definitely recommend you, you talk to your primary care doctor or your pharmacist. There are newer technologies that are that are developing our flu vaccines. And so not all of them are based on egg products anymore. There are two types, recombinant and cell culture vaccines that are commercially available that have, never, that have no association with chicken eggs. So people with egg allergies are perfectly safe to go ahead and get those. Um, the two more traditional kinds, the inactivated flu virus and the live attenuated flu viruses um, vaccination, sorry, they, those do have um, some association with egg products in their development though. So that's great. Lots of options for everybody. And um, of course, getting the, the flu vaccine is very important. So even with those allergies, talk to your primary care physician and talk through all your options. Um, getting back to kind of people who can get the flu, um, you know, obviously we know COVID is all in the news. It's what we're talking about. Um, I think a lot of people are wondering if it's possible to get COVID and the flu at the same time. Um, is that something you've seen with patients coming in with? I haven't seen any in my own practice, uh, but of course, as, as primary care physicians, being on the front line of a lot of the diagnosis of these, of these respiratory illnesses, we always wonder about it. Um, it hasn't been described at, in, in, in literature across the country um, that this happens at a significant rate, but it is possible. Um, when you have a viral infection, it can weaken your immune system and make you susceptible to other viruses or bacteria. Um, but it hasn't happened in a rate that we've seen that, you know, that we need to, to prepare for it. Now, testing for both 
COVID-19 and influenza when you have respiratory infections is a strategy that can help us differentiate how many people actually may have both. But so far, we haven't seen a tremendous amount of that enough to, to make it into any, any literature that I've, I've come across. Okay, and I know you mentioned this previously in the live, but for both COVID and the flu, obviously key to preventing both diseases is vaccination. Um, is it possible to get vaccines for both at the same time, or should you wait at all between getting a flu vaccine and a COVID vaccine? Is there any schedule? So according to the CDC's most recent guidance, um, you, it is safe to take both the flu vaccine and the, uh, the COVID-19 vaccine at the same time. And that's any formulation of either of them. Um, you should be able to get them at the same time. Um, if you have a delay and you're wondering, well, if I had my booster, say, yesterday, is it safe for me to get my flu vaccine today? I definitely recommend you talk to your healthcare provider about it. But getting them on the same day has been shown to be safe. Okay, great. And hopefully this isn't the case for most people, but if they do end up getting um, flu-like symptoms, where are the best places for them to go um, if they start developing those symptoms? Well, for for the most part, the, a good first, look, first line uh, tr strategy would be to contact your primary care doctor and they can direct you to whether or not to come into the office to maybe schedule a virtual visit with your primary care doctor or um, elsewhere. Um, if, if you or your family member don't have a primary care doctor and are looking for some kind of, some kind of testing now or treatment now, you can go to any Ochsner Urgent Care location, of which we have plenty around the city, or we even have the opportunity to schedule you with a doctor 24 hours a day, seven days a week with Ochsner's Anywhere Care virtual visit program. And that program really is great, especially for people, you know, if you are more inclined to stay at home. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about that, we'll leave the link in the comment section, but it is osher.org slash anywhere. And like Dr. Cleaver said, you can see a provider 24 seven um, through that application. Um, if someone ends up getting the flu um, and they're again, experiencing those symptoms, what are the best treatment options that um, that person or that patient can take to kind of help mitigate those symptoms? Well, I would say the first thing is to contact your primary care doctor and see if any treatment, any uh, prescription treatments are appropriate. We do have a few different antiviral uh, medications that we can use to treat influenza. Now the timing for those has to be pretty close to the onset of symptoms. So getting in touch with your doctor and getting the appropriate testing as soon as you've had the, your symptoms start is pretty important. Um, Tamiflu, most people have heard of Tamiflu. It's a five day course of an antiviral that does limit the severity and the duration of flu-like symptoms, but it does have to be given within the first 48 hours of symptoms. Um, we have also been using a new one-time dose of medicine called Zofluza. Um, although with this year's strand of influenza A, we've found that Zofluza can, can generate some resistance pretty quickly. So we've been mostly sticking with Tamiflu this season um, to treat influenza. Um, but you know the general strategies, um, if the antivirals, if you're out of the window or you choose not to take them, stay at home and you know try not to infect anyone else, we generally recommend um, to stay at home for uh, until you're 24 hours without a fever um, and your symptoms have significantly increased. We don't have a quarantine strategy like we do with coronavirus um, or COVID-19 uh, specific to the influenza. We usually just say 24 hours fever free and a, and a good reduction of your symptoms and then you're okay to go back around people. But you know, as we're all getting used to, to mask use, it would be helpful to keep those masks on, keep your hands clean to avoid spreading the infection, and then generally talk to your primary care doctor, but most over-the-counter symptom control measures are still very effective for influenza. Okay, great. Um, that does look like most of the questions that we have for today. Um, before we wrap up, I just wanted to see if there was any, you know, last minute advice you wanna give to those watching. Um, any last words of uh, wisdom? Well, I think that we've all been so focused on coronavirus that, and with influenza being so mild of a season last year, I think we kind of put it in the back of our minds, but keep in mind that we had such great rates of vaccinations last year that might've been 
one of the key factors in having a, a low flu season. When you look at COVID-19's impact, not only is it an impact to your own health, it's an impact to the healthcare system. And if we can keep influenza from overrunning the hospitals, similarly to what we're trying with COVID-19, that'll open up the door for us to take care of our normal, you know, our normal problems, health, health related problems in the hospital that aren't related to infection at all. So please get your flu vaccine and please, you know, contact your doctor if you have any questions, um, because if we can really get a move on this flu vaccine this year, it's not too late. We try to get these vaccines done, um, you know, before peak flu season. And it does seem that we're heading there, but even getting them to this day or or beyond will still help us cut down the numbers and, and it'll help you keep yourself from having a more likely severe case. Well, that's some great advice. Thank you so much um, for joining us today, Dr. Kleber. We really think provided some great advice for all of our audience um, to listen to. So if you haven't gotten your vaccine yet, like Dr. Kleber said, there's still time to get it before peak flu season. You can go to oshner.org slash flu to find out all those great resources that Dr. Kleber has mentioned today. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, be sure to talk to your primary care doctor and they can help guide you. Thank you.